Hi, I'm Larry Karaszewski, and this is Trailers from Hell. 1975 was an amazing year for movies. Nominated for Best Picture was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Dog Day Afternoon, Jaws, Barry Lyndon, and today's movie, Nashville. Robert Altman's Nashville is five days in the lives of 24 unforgettable people. The ad lines proclaim Nashville as the damnedest thing you ever saw, and close to 40 years later it still is. Robert Altman's master class in directing, interweaving 24 characters into a tapestry of paranoid 70s America. This might be my favorite film. It's long and messy, but that's also part of the appeal. When was the last time you saw a film that tried to say too much? And these performers, Every character feels so alive. Lily Tomlin, uh, Michael Murphy, Barbara Harris, Henry Gibson, never better. And especially Ronnie Blakely, as a character loosely based on country superstar Loretta Lynn. She is stunning. It's amazing. She, she never gives another major performance. Blakely is, is a one and done actor, so brilliant in her debut role and then never heard from again. Nashville gets written about a lot and is well loved by critics, but very few go to bat for it as a musical. And I think it should be up there with Singing in the Rain. You know, by the early 1970s, the traditional musical was dead, killed off by those lumbering, expensive Broadway adaptations like Paint Your Wagon. And everybody was trying to figure out how to use the new music of the day, rock, country, the uh, singer-songwriter stuff, how that stuff could be incorporated into a narrative film in a way that didn't feel old-fashioned, that felt relevant to the era, and that's exactly what Altman does here. Altman was known for being passionate about character development. He was always about empowering actors, giving them freedom to explore their parts. So it's no surprise that when he went to do a musical, he encouraged the actors to write their own songs, just like he encouraged them to improv dialogue. But writing music is a little more complex, so he brought in musician Richard Baskin to help out, and in a revolutionary move, the two decided to film the music live, so it doesn't have that phony lip-sync feeling that, that syncs most movies like this. And they definitely did something right. The only Oscar the film received is for Best Song, Keith Carradine's Heartbreaking, I'm Easy.